brothers and sisters, the Bible says that uh, the borrower is the servant of the lender. Borrow less. Because the spirit of borrowing, the mentality of borrowing is a mentality of poor. Yes, Lord, indeed, your presence is heaven. We are in your presence this morning. Take over. Let humanity disappear so that you alone may appear and speak to your people. In Jesus' mighty name we pray and we say amen. Amen. Should we give Jesus a round of applause? Amen. Praise the living God. You may have a seat. You are welcome to the service of this morning. Thank you for leaving your house, for leaving your comfortable bed and joining us to share the word this morning. Come with me in the book of Matthew chapter 5. We'll read one verse, verse 3, and then we'll uh, go to 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9, and then we'll read Proverbs chapter 27, verse, uh, sorry, Proverbs chapter 12, verse 27. And if you can give us in the last, this last scripture, give us the version Common English Bible, CEB, Common English Bible, if you can. Let's go to Matthew chapter 5, verse 3. It is written as follows Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that through his poverty might become rich. You might become rich. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 27. If you can give us common English Bible version. Common English Bible. Do you have common English Bible? C-E-B. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 27. The Bible says, The lazy do not roast any game. We did read this scripture last Sunday, if you remember. But, sorry, but the diligent feeds on the riches of the hand. But the diligent feeds on the riches of the hand. You know, in French, it says that the precious work of that God has given, I mean, the precious treasure that God has given to human, it is work or activity. Now, my message this morning is titled Poverty Mentality. Poverty mentality. Beloved, poverty, it is not only the lack of things or money, that the way we are going to define it, but we'll see even further that poverty, it is greater than what you think. And this morning we're going to learn about poverty mentality. And there are many Christians who are having poverty mentality. This is the reason why. We are not succeeding in our lives. This is why we are not fully enjoying our Christianity. You need to enjoy your Christianity as a child of God. If you are not enjoying your Christianity, it's a problem. There's nowhere else where we're going to enjoy Christianity. After earth, there is heaven. And in heaven, we don't need houses. In heaven, we don't need children. We don't need, we don't need money. We don't need anything. Those things, we need them here on earth. So you better do your best. Go out of the spirit of uh, poverty mentality so that you may experience and enjoy what God did prepare for you. So, what is poverty? Let me de de define first what is poverty. So, poverty is the state of a poor. Okay, let me make it even better. Poverty is the state of lacking sufficient money to live at a standard considered comfortable or normal in the society. So when you are in that state that you lack money, 
that is acceptable for you to live a comfortable life acceptable by the society we say you are poor but poverty is also that state of a low or inferior standard or quality when you have a low or inferior standard or quality you are also a poor so a poor person is not necessarily the person who does not have money but it's also a person who is having a poor or inferior standard or quality when your your quality is lower than acceptable you are also a poor man you are a poor woman now listen to this research have shown that 70 percent of people who wins lotto you know lotto 70 percent of people who wins lotto they go bankrupted or broke in the first five years if not less 70 can you imagine that so all those people have been poor that have been praying lotto and somehow like i saw there's a woman somewhere um in soero who did gain se uh, how much was it it was something like 70 million rand jackpot 70 million rand but the research is showing that 70 of those people who are getting suddenly becoming rich on 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 you know on a clack of a finger and they become rich 70 percent of them within the five years of their life they got back to the state i don't know if you have heard this other story of this gentleman who, who, who won two million six months later he was begging again he was having two million but six months later he was begging again what was the problem what went wrong what went wrong is his mentality he was not having the mentality of rich people he was still having mentality of poor that is why what you are in the inside no matter what can happen on your outside you will join what you are or who you are in the inside <laughs> so you must be careful if your mentality is a mentality of a poor man we can lend you how many rents that we can lend you you will standardize you'll you'll reach that point of the inside that is the reason why we need to learn that poverty mentality so that you may take that poverty mentality out of our lives because if we don't take that uh, poverty mentality we will end up being poor in the other hand there is a gentleman in the usa we, for sure you know him all of you his name is donald trump donald trump before him to become a president he was already a multi-billionaire but the narrative is showing that this gentleman he got bankrupted six times in his life he went bankrupted his empires got bankrupted six times and after each and every of this time he managed to come back you know why because of his mentality he has another mentality he was not having a mentality of a poor so when he went down his mentality make him go back to his point because what you are in the inside will finally will finally join your outside so if your inside is low if your mentality is the mentality of poverty you will end up being a poor man or a poor woman hallelujah and we say poverty is not necessarily lacking money but also low quality when you have low quality when you have low standard no matter where they can put you they can put you in a palace couple of years ago i was watching tv you remember what happened to zimbabwe they took out all the white people they chased them out and then they took everything in their own hands they said we're going to build zimbabwe ourselves it's not bad but it's something that happened that amazed me they show a farm that was owned by a white people and then when that change came that white man was chased out and then there was a black man who took over that farm 
Now, five years down the line, they show the farm. Farm that was having cattle, farm that was having, you know, all those kind of things that you can imagine in the farm. The guy was sitting in front of the house that was almost half broken, no cattle anymore, no animals anymore, no field anymore. Everything was completely disrupted. Now we are asking yourself, what has happened to this man? It's because his mentality was not a mentality of a farmer. Because inside him, he was not a farmer. He was happy to see that I'm going to take everything now. I'm going to take um, the farm that I'm having, the, the kettles inside, the addis inside. That I'm going to take it. He didn't know that that what he was seeing outside was the inside of somebody that went outside. He thought that it was just outside. Now him, when he came, he took his inside. And his inside went in line with the outside. Therefore, the outside went down. So you are seeing how important is it for you to break the poverty mentality. Now, what are those poverty mentality? Then you are going to see that certain things that we are doing in our life, we are setting ourselves to become poor. We are setting our children after us to become poor. We are setting ourselves poverty. And if we continue like that, we'll never go out of that, uh, that poverty. Listen, I told you, God will not going to do what you can do. God will only do what you cannot do. What you can do, God will never do that. What you cannot do, God will do. And this we're going to talk about, you can do. Therefore, if you don't do, God will not going to come and help you. You better do, and the grace of God will be with you, and then you'll make it. You better break the poverty mentality. Poverty mentality is a way of thinking that is in line with poverty. It's a way of apprehending the world. It's a way of seeing the world. It's a way of seeing things. Beloved, the way you see things will determine how you're going to act upon those things. The way you see money, the way you consider money will determine how you're going to act upon it. The way you see other people, the way you see the brother and the sister seated next to you, will determine how you're going to value that person or not. Because it is your inside. So what you are doing is actually the result of your view of the world. The way you give, the way you relate to people, the way you do things around you is exactly what you think inside you. You may lie to us, you may do an effort to lie to us, but it will come back. Because always the inside end up by leveling with your outside. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Now let's see those mentality. The first mentality of poverty. Poverty mentality is this mentality that lives on credit. Hello? Amen. Poverty mentality is this mentality that lives in credit so everything the person has is on credit it is borrowed it is something that is having that is say i will pay later the clothes that is wearing are on credit the car that is driving on credit the house where is living on credit everything that he does the study that is going to study the school that is paying on credit so his life in reality does not belong to him but belong to somebody. This is a poverty mentality. Because now, you will be living that way, you are at the mercy of the person who has lent you the credit. Let's go and see the wisdom of the Bible. Proverbs chapter 28, 20, 22 verse 7. Proverbs 22 verse 7. Listen what God he is saying. Wisdom God is telling us in Proverbs 22 verse 7. 7. The Bible says, the rich, that's what, rules over the poor. Liking it or not, rich will rule over you. The law of the rich will go over you. If the rich say, we must remove this house and put railway here, you may talk, you may do, it will happen. Now, and the borrower is servant to the lender. So now, you are becoming a servant, a slave of the person who lends you money. 
A couple of years ago, I, got a, I took a loan from the bank. You know, I was desperately in need of money, that I needed money. And then I went and took money. They just tell me the amount they're going to give me. I was taken by the amount. I did not listen to the terms and conditions. T's and C's. Only later on when I start paying it and I, I receive the letter from the bank. Then I realized that I was now have to pay the double of what I took from the bank. It's meant that now all the money that I'm getting now, when I get my salary... It is not fully mine. There is a portion which belongs to the person that borrowed me money. So when you live in credit, you are setting yourself to poverty. As a child of God, we must do our best to have as least as possible of credit. You must make sure that uh, the money that reflect, reflect into your bank account, it is yours. Amen. God knows how many people here, when they get money at the end of the month, they are crying already. He looks the amount, but he's crying because he knows it's not his. I have friends that told me, on the day of pay, the pay date, before the pay date, they are waiting at midnight at the ATM, so that when the money just enter at midnight, they will put the cut and withdraw what they can withdraw. Because if they leave it, uh, the owner of the money will take everything. You know, that kind of money that go, goes without even asking your permission. Why? Now when somebody come and say, we have a problem, help us, you are poor. Because now you don't have the necessary to meet your needs. A poor does not have the necessary to meet his need. And you cannot meet the need of others. But that is something you are setting up yourself. That is something we set ourselves. So brothers and sisters, the Bible said that uh, the borrower is the servant of the lender. Borrow less. Because the spirit of borrowing, the mentality of borrowing is a mentality of poor. Listen to this. Rich people... They talk about idea. Poor people, they talk about other people. Always. Poverty mentality will make you only talking about other people. And poor mentality always adds liability in their lives. Liability means debt. Rich people, they add asset in their lives. Are you getting me? Let me break it down. Poverty will lead you to always add liability. You see those messages that comes into your phone that say, we can give you two, 250,000 rand. Apply. You bank. Apply. Those are dangerous messages. Don't buy it. Because they are trying to set you to their mercy. Now when they set you to their mercy... They will increase the percentage. They will tell you this is inflation. Now, we agreed on 12%. A year later, it is 14%. Another year is 15%. Until you end up 20% of what you've borrowed. What are you doing? Poverty mentality. As a child of God, learn to live according to what you have. Yeah. What makes us to borrow is because we don't want to live on the limit of what we are earning. And usually, we don't want to live according to what we are earning because we want to prove to others. Not even to do something valuable, but it's just we want to impress others. It's just because we want people to see which kind of car I'm driving, which kind of house I'm Living, which kind of suburbs where I live, which kind of clothes I am dressing. That is poverty mentality. When you live for other people, you don't live for you. Remember, at the end of the month, the person who will pay the bill is going to be you. It's not those people that you are trying to impress. 
You might impress them. We might be impressed. We must call you Prezo. We must call you any name that you would like to call you. We must give you all the praise that you lack. But at the end of the month, none of us will ever give you one rent. Be careful with poverty mentality. Am I talking to somebody? Yes. Poverty mentality is that mentality of living on credit. The second thing in the poverty mentality, poverty mentality is that mentality that always depends on others. He always depends on others. Listen, you must learn to depend on yourself. There are people who depend on their father. There are people who depend on the loan. There are people who depend on the government. He is getting married. You know, I saw a young lady who was having already six children. Then I ask, you are young. And those children, everyone has his own father. He said, I don't need the, the men. I just need a lot of children so that I can get more grants. This one going to grant is 350. How many are paying them? 350 or six something? Four something. Four, 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 multiple by six is like 2,000. What is 2,000? When will you build? When will you become richer if you are living on the Lord? I know it's very sad reality. But you need to go out of that. Those people who put us on these kind of things, they want to maintain us poor. Because as long as you are, you are living depending on other people, you are on the mercy of the people you are depending on. Don't depend on them. That one is not a loan, but they are giving you something. But they are giving you something that is not enough. And you don't even, get, you don't even realize that it's not enough. Beloved, as children of God, we must not depend on people. We must work with our own hands. We must make sure that what I'm getting here is mine. I don't depend on somebody. Go to school. Push them. Instead of giving me those, lo the, those uh, loans, uh, let me go to school. Instead of me uh, uh, living on, the, on those uh, whatever, let me go to school. Because when I go to school and I qualify, I can make my own money. Hallelujah. Poverty mentality. Your eyes are always on some people. I'm waiting on my father. I'm waiting on the... That's why you get frustrated. Because the Bible said that curse be the person who lies on a human being. A human being will always deceive you. Sometimes it's not because he planned to deceive you, but because he's a human being. I can promise you that amount of money. But if my own son gets sick and I must take him to the hospital, I'm not going to leave that money and allow my son to die. I will take my son to the hospital and use the same money. When you come tomorrow, I will give you explanation. If you never receive explanation when somebody promises you something, when you arrive that day, say, no, sorry, I want it back, I have some. Yes, it's normal, but God will never give you explanation. Amen. When he promises you something, he will never give you explanation. He will give to you. They told me last Sunday, I went very large, but this, now I'm going to make sure. The third poverty mentality is this mentality that takes pleasure to receive more than to give. You see, poor mentality or poverty mentality is that mentality is always enjoying receiving. He doesn't enjoy giving. He enjoys receiving. Listen, let's go to the Bible. Act of Apostle chapter 20, verse 35. Acts, Act of Apostle chapter 20, verse 35. Now, those are Bible principles. Remember what I told you last Sunday. I say that we have the life of Christ and we have the principles of Christ. The life of Christ is you receive Jesus as a personal Lord and Savior, you'll enter heaven. But the principles of Christ will make you to be successful in this earth. And if you don't apply those principles, you will enter heaven, but you will die poor. And the principles of Christ are eternal. You can be a pagan, you can be a Christian, it doesn't matter. If you are Applying those principles, you will become successful. The Bible says, Now, 
in everything I did, I showed you that by this kind of hard work, we must help the weak. Remembering the word the Lord Jesus himself said. What the Lord said? It is more blessed to give than to it is more blessed to give than to receive. Now poverty mentality turn this scripture. They make it, it is more blessed to receive than to give. Those are the people who always are ready to receive. In their mentality, he, 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 there is no place for him to give. There is only place for him to receive. They are walking with a hand always ready to receive. You see, when you have this kind of mentality, you know God of progress in your life. If you have that mentality to receive, receive from the government, receive from people. Receive. Listen, everything which is cheaper, it is expensive. <laughs> everything which is cheaper, it is cheap is expensive, my brother. You always think that, oh, it's cheaper food. Cheaper food, it will give you sickness. Because if it was quality food, it would be expensive. Cheap food, it will make you become diabetic because it's full of grace. It's full of bad things. Be careful when they say, he has free of charge here. There is nothing which is free. Everything you see, it is free. Somebody has paid for it. Or other, otherwise, you will pay for them. Make you pay in another way. There's no cheaper things. So be careful. The Bible says there is more pleasure, there is more joy, there is more blessing to give than to receive. Now poverty mentality is the mentality of those people who only are set to receive. They are not set to give. The only thing that if I receive, it is okay. But what they forget, when you receive something, if I receive one handkerchief, this is only one. But if I was having one and I lend it to somebody, it's like I've sown it. So if you sow something, you will never reap only what you sow. You'll always reap more. That is the principle. So if you are only receiving, you're only going to have what you have given you. But if you learn to give to other people, then you're going to multiply what you have. Poverty mentality. Now you're looking at me, no pastor, what you're talking about. It's nice to receive. It is nice to receive because you are in the poverty mentality. Your vision is tunneled. Your vision is just tunneled. But I want you this morning to change your way of seeing things. Pagan de do. Do you know that there is a great thief, well known worldwide, called Pablo Escobar, seller of drugs and all those things. But, he built a city for the poor of his country. So every time they will look for him, he will run in that city. And then the people of that city will protect him. Say, no, you can't come here. He's not here. Why? Because those people know that we are in the city because of him. We get paid because of him. Because of him. There is this player. I don't know if you know him, if you're watching soccer. Saido Mane. Do you know him? But he changed the life of his entire village. He built a hospital in his village. He built schools in his village. He built the mall, the road, and he is paying all the, the, the how do you call them? Um, the public servant in his country, in his, not his country, his village, all of them, on top of their salary, is paying them. Imagine now that guy when he finished to play football and go back to his village. What's going to happen? You, they will change you, chase you from your village because they will tell you, when you get your money, we will not see you here. Now that you're poor, you're here. You know, there are people when you go back home, it's happened that life happened, you have a problem, and then you say, no, let me go back at home for me to get the strength. Your little brother will be reminding you. When you are fighting for food, you say, are you also? When you were getting your money, you did not think about the house. Now you are coming to fight this small bread with us. You'll be upset, but it is true. Because you were enjoying only receiving. You did not understand that you need also to sow. Hmm. Poverty mentality. Am I hurting you? Hmm? Are you hurt? No, it's poverty mentality. 
We need to break that mentality. We need to break that mentality already receiving. Be among those who are giving. Be among those also when they speak about it, they say he's a giver. The Bible says God like cheerful givers. Those who are giving with joy. Those who know that as I'm giving, I will receive back. Few Christians are givers. Few Christians, when they come to God, they are God, give me more so that I can give to others. Listen to this. The Bible says God gives seed to the sower. So if you are not having the heart of a sower, you might miss seed. You see, when God gives seed, there will always be a part for you and a part for you to sow. The fourth poverty mentality is stingy mentality. Stingy mentality. It is not me who is saying it. I'm going to prove to you in the Bible. Stingy. Can somebody say stingy? We know in the church who are stingy. That this one, even if you ask, when he gives offering, it's only coins. <laughs> but when he goes to coconut, when he just enter, people start singing already. Praise or is here. Today we'll drink. When you have to impress the little girl, yet he's married. When you have to impress those young ladies there, he can give money. You're having a problem. God must deliver you. Stingy mentality. You know, stingy people are people that don't give. They don't help other people. They always have reason to not help. Stingy mentality. Proverbs chapter 20, uh, 11 verse 24. Proverbs 11 24. Sister G, do you have the Passion Translation? Can I have it on the Passion Translation? Proverbs 11 24. Stingy mentality. You know, stingy people. They don't give. They don't share. Stingy. Yes. Proverbs 11 verse 24. Yes. Generosity brings prosperity. Ge <laughs> okay, 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 okay. The Bible says, Generosity brings what? Prosperity. prosperity. So if you want to prosper, you must be a generous person. Okay? But withholding from charity brings poverty. Withholding for charity brings poverty. On that note, find for me the, um, the CEB, Common English Translation. Now listen to that. I like that word because they're saying the word is stingy into it. <clears throat> Beloved, when you are stingy, when you are withholding, the Bible says you are becoming more poor. You see, the principle of the world is when you are keeping more, then you'll become rich. But as a children of God, our prosperity does not come in keeping. In keeping, you become poor. But in sharing with other people, you become richer. So, stay, I mean, poverty mentality is that mentality that brings you, that leads you to always be stingy to always think about you you don't think about other people to always keep in excess stingy people who don't share doesn't share food that's why you, don't, you are not in a good health you are eating and not getting weight why stingy when the brother comes you don't want to share you get money but you're not accomplish anything why because you only keep for yourself when people among you are suffering, you don't give, you don't help. And children of God, if you want to become rich, if you want to become prosperous, if you want to increase as a child of God, you must learn to lend to others. To become generous. You know, those things you don't say that you are, we will see that you are. Don't tell us, no, I'm a generous man. I'm a gen no, don't worry. If you are generous, we will see that you are a generous person. And if you are stingy, we will see also that you are stingy. You see, stinginess is the work of the flesh. You, you are not taught to become stingy. You have to kill the stinginess. I don't know if the word exists. Because if, you, you, if a little baby, you give him a bread, and you ask him, give me, there are 90% of chances that you'll just cut a little bit for you. There are very blessed children 
will cut big for you and small for him. But the majority of children, because they're having the stinginess in them, they'll just cut a little bit for you. Why? They're always learning to become stingy, to keep big for me, only a little bit for other people. Hallelujah. So that is a mentality of poverty. Because of time, the fifth mentality of poverty, it is this mentality to not save and to not invest. To not save and to not invest. To only think about today. To only eat today. You know there are people who are thinking that life is only today. They eat today and then they forget about tomorrow. If you live that life, you are setting yourself to poverty. You must learn to save and you must learn to invest. Pastor, investment is in the Bible. There's a Bible talking about saving. Well, let's go to the Bible. The Bible says in the, the book of Proverbs chapter 21 verse 20. You see, God knew that you will live in this time. That he should give you also the word for this time. God knew about this time. Poverty mentality. Proverbs chapter 21 verse 20. Okay, read with me here. The Bible says, the wise, that's what, store up. You know, I like the Bible and I like God. Because God doesn't just say word. He say proper word for you to understand. The Bible says, the wise, that's what, store up choice food and olive oil. Not just any other food. Choice food. He knows what to put aside. As a child of God, you know you must know how to save. When you get five, take two, put aside. You don't know what will happen tomorrow. Poverty mentality, when he got money, we will know that he got money now. He will buy for us everything. Uh, well, us will, will, will eat it, no problem. But when you'll be in trouble, we have less chance that all of, all of us will come to help you. I'm telling you. So you must learn to save. You must learn to save. When you get five, take two, put aside. I have one of my friends <laughs> who was shocked. You know, he was calling all of us and was telling us the story. He said he was shocked because one of his colleagues where they are working, a lady who was close to retire, was telling him, oh, you know me, when they pay me, 80% of my salary goes directly to my saving. 80% of my salary goes directly to my saving. I live only on 20% of my salary. That friend of mine told me, hey, me, I don't even save that 20% that him is, her is using. I, when they pay I have so much liability, you see, liability. And this is a problem with black people, we need to work up. Yeah. We need to work up as black people. If we want to take over, we must learn to have less liability. To have more asset. Because if you have asset, that is your value. That is your cupboard. Remember the word cupboard? Yeah. That is the, your cupboard. That is your, if you are having, you see, that is why when you apply to the bank, they first check how many liability do you have. They just send you decline. And down there they write affordability problem. <laughs> oh my God. God help us. Have you ever received that answer? You, no, I want this house. I want this house. They check your liability. They check your asset. At the end, unfortunately, we decline affordability problem because they see you can't afford it you already have a lot of liability they don't want to be in court with you they don't want to be in court with you let's say you can't afford but when you have a lot of asset they will they will follow you yeah. don't you want to take this don't you want to take this car don't you want to? because they can see you you can afford many south african you know recently we had a sad story one of our employees hanged himself a couple of weeks ago, maybe two weeks. Two weeks? Did you, did you hear that? The guy who hanged himself? He did not. He, he hanged himself. And when we, are, we start checking what happened, we realize that 
couple of weeks ago, the bank repossessed his cars. The bank repossessed things he was having. Too much liability. Impossible to pay. There are people who are having suicidal thoughts. Because too much liability. You don't save. If you have a problem today, what's going to happen to you? Show me your saving. Do you, do you know even that the saving exists? The word saving. There are second, what they call saving account. No, I need to teach you these things. If I don't teach you these things, who's going to teach you? The world, they want you to go bankrupted. As our children of God, we need to have wisdom. The Lord Jesus said that the children of the world, they are wiser than the children of God. Because they know when I get five, I must take two, I put aside. I don't understand. You start just working now, you're already in debt. How come? How come you have so much liabilities? How much you owe so much? What have you done with what you do? You, what you owe? Hallelujah. Amen. Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. Amen. It is time for us to be wise enough and to store up. Somebody says store up. Store up. Let's make it in the language of today. Save. 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 You must save food and oil. The Bible says, but who? The fools gulp up their own. They took their self down. They gulp their, their, their down. Whatever they had, they finish. Sometimes you buy a bread, be a bit saving. Don't just eat all the slices. Yourself are eating six slices in the morning. That's a problem. Now later on you are, you, are, you are complaining that you have diabetes, you have hypertension. You are eating too much. Take two slices, keep the other two slices for the afternoon or for tomorrow. Don't just eat all the slices today. What about tomorrow? The people who are eating like it's the last day to eat. No. Tomorrow you'll eat again. You must understand that let me eat today and then think about tomorrow. You see, those are people who say, no, the Bible says tomorrow will take care of himself. Ah, okay. Wait. Then you must have enough faith. <laughs> ah, brothers and sisters. Brothers and sisters, we need to save. Hello? Go look for a banker. You see the bank where you are banking. There are free bankers there. That you can see. You tell them, no, I want to organize my economy, my saving. I need to start saving. And let me tell you the good way for you to save. That it, must be, it must be a debit order. Because if you have to put yourself. Let it be a debit order. Yeah. Sure. You can hold it. Because saving. And. FNB have, okay, I'm not making a public publicity of FNB. You can use any other bank, don't mind. But FNB have something they call 32 days account. Do you know that? Yeah. I'm informing you. 32 days account. Yeah, there's also seven, seven days account. If you put your money there, you can only get it back if you give a notice of 32 days. Yeah. All this is to help you to save. Do you understand? You are selling something, go there. So, let me put it into because so that you cannot be tempted when you go to the mall. Oh, nice. Swap, you swap. You go there, swap, you swap. You swap. <laughs> Save. Poverty mentalities. You need also to invest to save. If I, I took five, I put it aside after five years. Five will remain five. Now, to invest is to take the five to put it somewhere so that when I'll come back five years ago, it should not remain five, it will be more, more than five. Now you're looking at me, Pastor. Is it in the Bible? Well, let's go in the Bible. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 2. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 2. All the principles I'm giving you, they are not... They, these people from the world, they copy the Bible, I'm telling you. They just copy the Bible. That, those are the principles that as we are unable...
to apply. Yet it is in our own Bibles. Look at how the pagan are rich. Because they are investing. They are on Novatech. They are on all those kinds. You, if when we speak about investing, you are asking, what is this? It is something that is happening, brother. You better open your eyes, sister. You better do something so that you may become competitive. You're not going to become a millionaire by screaming inside the church here, I'm a millionaire. I receive. I'm a millionaire. You're not going to be a millionaire until you go and invest. Now read with me. It is not me. Read with me. The Bible says, invest. In seven ventures, you see, <laughs> oh God, invest, invest in seven ventures. Yes, in eight, you do not know what disaster may come upon the land. Invest. <laughs> oh my God. You know, sometimes I feel ashamed. You know, I remember a couple of months ago, I was somewhere. And they were talking about big numbers. 20 million, 60 million. You know, we, I was seated there. They are talking about million. Then I realized. I look around. I saw when we started speaking about those millions, all us black, we were there. We were quiet. I just heard the white. We are talking. Yeah, the yearly, the yearly million is 20 million. And all of us were quiet, us black. Why are we quiet? It's because we don't know those things. I was so, you know, I, I said, no, I must learn this thing. I can't be, you know. Can you imagine that? When they talk about investing in the Nasdaq, in the Novatech, in the other things, black are not there. Or when they will learn that 20 years later, them, they got 200 millions. Do you know as you are sitting there with your money that you saved, there are people who took that very same money, amount that you saved, two years ago, right now they are already millionaire. You, when you go back, yes, you saved is good. But the Bible says save and invest. You see, poverty mentality. We saved the same money, you and me. But two years down the line, I got more than you. Because I did invest and you, you just saved. I'm saying this so that you may just wake up. Yeah. I have 100,000 rent in my bank account. <laughs> that guy is, is, is mocking you. Because if you have 100,000 in your bank account, that bank will take charges to keep your 100,000. Chances that five years later, when he will give you the, the 100,000 rent, it's not going to be 100,000 rent. He will give you explanation. No, we kept the money for you. We took charges. We did this. We did that. Now it's 95. Where is the other 5,000? Ah, but charges. But if you did invest it, it will produce. The people are looking at me. Hey, Pastor, where the investment? It is something. Remember, last Sunday we spoke about how to become or how to succeed. We say we must learn. Learning is also something that you can do to become successful. Hallelujah. Are you getting me? So save and invest. The sixth one. Poverty mentality. Spend without planning. Spend without planning. Spend without planning. Spend without planning. Planning. Spending without planning is set up of poverty. You go to the mall and then you start buying things you did not plan. Oh, nice dress. Shwa. You swap. Good. Then you go again. Wow, nice shoes. Shwa. You, you see again. Wow, nice this. Shwa. At the end of the month, you'll realize that the important things are not paid. You wasted money into useless things. And this is a problem with mostly our ladies. Amen. Hello? Amen. Mostly it's our ladies that are already attracted. You go to the mall. You know, it's important before you to go to the mall to make a list of things that you need. 
Because your body, your eyes, when they go there and see things, they will make you like you need them. But you don't need them, you just want them. There is a difference between what you need and what you want. Most of our African mama, they don't like to write what they want. If you just say, please, can you write what you want? Eh, no. You think that I don't know how to control my house? Eh, yeah. But at the end of the day, when you go there, when they come back, what's going to happen? What was supposed to be bought is not. Then you see many other new items that were bought. It's never happened to you. Be honest, mama. <laughs> never happened to you? They always say, I'm a mother. I know what I need. But at the end of the day, in the middle of the month, Papa, can you please supply again? There's no sold. Poverty mentality. If you get in the mall, you will see, you know, when the shopping center at the end of the month, I always see, mostly, I'm sorry, I'm not praising them at all, white people, they always have a paper. Two. Take two. Go there. But you and me, we trust our head. <laughs> eh? You are taking things you don't need, my brother. You are taking things you don't need, my sister. It's going to cost you. You know, at the tail, when you are at the tail, when you are there, when it's 10, 10, 10, you look, 3,000, 3,005, 3,050, 4,000. I've seen people. Mama, stop. <laughs> you, you know, I remember one day I was with my wife. There's a guy who just blocked the wife. Who blocked things. Stop here. <laughs> It stopped. Poverty mentality. We become ridiculous. Because you did not make a plan on your spending. It's happened to me. I have money. You know when you only have money, you, you, you put your hand in the pocket, you walk in the mall. Papa, can I take this? Take. Can I take this? Take. Hey. When you realize, you don't even look the price of what your child is taking. You know nowadays, small toys like this, they're going to be 2,000. Small like this. 2,000. Papa, plan. When you are planning, you are also showing your children how to plan. I tell my children, when they ask me, Papa, can you get this? I say, let's plan it for next month. Now when they're asking me, they say, Papa, next month, when you'll have money, can you also buy for me this? Even holiness, ask me next month, Papa. Your sister say, hey, Papa doesn't have money now. You must wait next month. I say, wow, that's good. It went in the heart. Because many of us, we are becoming poor because we are spending without planning. You understand now why you are crying? I'm getting a lot of money. Where is the money going? Oh God, there's a demon who's coming to... The demon has said, we are not there. It's your stupidity. We are not there. They go to God. God, now that is saying that we should go, can you allow us now to go and show him when we are there what is happening to money? Beloved, spending without planning is a setup of poverty. Poor only spend like that. Rich people, when they enter, they spend their money wisely because they know the value of money. You and me, we don't know that. Hallelujah. Amen. Which number is that? Number six. The seventh one. Okay. They're telling me that it's time. Time is up or time is about? <laughs> time is about, okay. Two more left. Give me five minutes. I'm going to finish. Now, the seventh one is poverty mentality. They always accumulate their riches in dishonestly. Dishonestly. They always think that if I'm dishonest, I steal at work, I do maneuver at work, then I become rich. Listen, the Bible is warning us Jeremiah chapter 22, verse 13 to 14. Jeremiah 
22, 13 to 14. Many of us will lie to get more. I told you the other time. We'll bring a suit and then we say it's tickish. But it was just so here at Slabani West. You are lying to us, it's tickish. You put all the tickish, tickish, tickish. We buy it expensive because we think it's tickish. But God knows what you are doing to us. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 22, verse 13 to 14. The Bible says, Woe to him who built his palace by unrighteousness. His upper room by injustice. Making his own people work for nothing. Not paying them for their labors. So beloved, be careful when you are accumulating things by lying, by doing all those funny things that you are doing to get money. If you are a businessman, be an honest businessman. When other people are lying, don't lie. Tell them, this is not Turkish, it's from Tlabani. But it's a nice quality from Tlabani West. Promote also Tlabani West. Why you always think that Turkish is better than us? If it's South Africa, say, proudly South Africa. It's not from Turkish, but this one is proudly South Africa. But it's a good quality. Somebody will pay. Don't lie to us. It's Turkish, 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 Turkish. You will see. God will blow on that money that you are, you are gaining unjustly. Hallelujah. In Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 12. You know there are a lot of crook, business crook people who are lying to us. Is this food made today? No, it's made today. It's made today. But this food is three days. Why? Just because you want to gain more. Hallelujah. Habakkuk 2 12. The Bible says, Woe to him who builds a city with bloodshed and establishes a town by injustice. Let me not comment there. You understand what we do sometimes to get money in the wrong ways. The people are getting money by prostitution or whatever ways which is wrong in the eyes of God. You are not going to get anything. The last one. Setup of property is thinking that if I have faith, it is enough. I don't need to do anything. Are you getting that? Thinking that if you have faith, it is enough. You don't need anything. You are fooling yourself. James, last scripture, chapter 2, verse 17. James, chapter 2, verse 17. James 2, 17. The Bible says that faith without action, it is dead you are thinking that i just need to have faith god is not your your garden boy that you can send god go and take for me this god do this no god is your god and god is a worker he's a hard worker he worked for six days and then he rested do not rest if you haven't worked there is no rest for those who haven't worked because you still have energy you shall work the bible said in the same way faith by itself if it is not accompanied by action it is dead. Do something. Don't think that faith will make things easy. No. Don't think that if you have faith, then you get everything. You must learn to do something. Set up of poverty is thinking and that is the problem I have with the church of the living God. We are so used to I receive Men of God prophesy. Men of God say a word. When you say a word, because that men of God said already, said already. But apply something, do something. Because if you don't do, Jesus, they came to him. They say, these people are, are hungry. They have no food. Jesus could just say, let them be full in their tummy. And then they could have been full. But he said, what do you have? What do you have? What do you have? And from what they have, he multiplied for them to have more. Amen. So you must learn to stop that Christianity of they are living in the roof. They are living in the imagination, imaginary world. Change your Christianity. Hallelujah. Amen. Poverty. Mentalities. You must kill that today. Let's rise up on our feet. So that you can kill the poverty mentality. <laughs> poverty mentality needs to be killed, my brother. It need to be killed. 
I don't know where the Lord spoke to you. I don't know what is happening with your life. I don't know which setup of poverty that is in your life today that you would like to get rid of. But it is possible. You can get rid of poverty mentality. You can get rid of. Now think, think, think. Go through what we spoke about. Go through what, what the Lord has spoken to you. You know, I was asking God, why are you giving me this message these days? And God said, it's because I want my people to improve, to grow. God wants you to improve and to grow. God wants you to become rich. And we don't become rich by accident. Things need to be done. We learn the secret, the secret of success. Today we learn the poverty mentality that you need to kill. Look at yourself. There are things you are lacking today. You could have had a great saving today if we knew how to spend what God put in your hand. God doesn't lack like people are wasting. The Bible says after eating the bread and the fish that he multiplied, he said, take the leftover so that there may not be any waste. Yet you and me, we are great wasters. We are wasting. We need God. Start speaking to God already. Tell him, Lord, I need your help. I need to change my ways. Of taking care of what you put in my hand. Remember there is nothing that you may have in your hand. That you haven't received from the Lord. Everything you have in your hand. Are coming from the Lord. Speak to God right now. Tell him to help you Lord. Tell him to assist you. Tell him to help you. Father we need your help. Break. The poverty mentality in us this morning. We came today so that you may set us free. You may give us ability to prosper, to progress, to improve, to become big. Jesus, come and help us, O oh Lord. Look at how we have wasted the resources you put in our hands. We have wasted the resources. Yesterday we have so much to have. We already have nothing. Because we didn't know how to plan our expenses. We have been not saving, Lord. We have been eating everything, even the seed we ate. Father, we need your help this morning. Teach us, help us, strengthen us. We need your help, Lord. We need your help, Jesus. Now tell him this. Let's pray together right now. Say, Lord Jesus. I've wasted so much. I set up myself to poverty. But this morning, I've heard your word. I'm breaking the poverty mentality in my life in Jesus' name. I free myself from poverty mentality. From today, I declare and I decree, I am a changed person. I am a changed Christian. I will progress. I will improve. And I will see my riches. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' name.